Hey friends, Roth here, Louisville Pro Activist Report. I know it's been a minute since I've done an interview, but uh, I'm starting a series of interviews today. We're going to be talking to people involved in the protest, be it organizers, activists, or, or media that's covering it, and we're just going to get a lot of perspectives and uh, just kind of help you fill in the gaps for everybody at home that hasn't been able to make it out. Uh, so I've got a great guest with me today. Today I have with me Catherine Harrington. She is a photojournalist. She works for Leo and The Voice. So welcome to the show, Catherine. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. So as a photojournalist, I, I, I wanted to bring you on because I know you've got a different perspective than many of us, which, uh, which I like because I know, you know, with your job, it's, you're there to frame, frame these events. Mm -hmm. um, so just talk about photojournalism as a whole. What kind of drew you to that? And, uh, you know, what do you like about it? Um, I just, I've always liked the more, uh, kind of documentary photography. And, um, yeah. Just kind of, I just like getting different stories and talking to people and, like, you know, finding out what's going on. And I just, I've always liked candid photos and getting pictures of people doing things and, so. Okay. Talk about how you uh, ended up with the Leo and the Voice. Now they're they're run by the same company, right? So. Uh, yes, Red Pen so, Media. So you're more of an employee for them than you are specifically one or the other magazine, right? Uh, yeah, I, I work for yeah, I'm full time for both. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so how long you been with them? Uh, so I started off as a freelancer. And, well, actually, I started off as an intern in 2017 for Leo and um, yeah and then after my internship ended I started freelancing for a while and then, um, and then eventually I did you know full-time position opened up and so now I just never left <laughs> yeah it's nice it's always good to find something you like you know oh yeah I feel lucky every day that I'm get to do have a job in photography I never I never thought it would happen graduating with an art degree <laughs> talk about the process a little bit do, you, do they assign you where to be or do you get to pick what you want to cover and then how's that work um so it's a, it's a little bit of both um you know sometimes my editor will find events that uh you know he'll think are good to cover sometimes I find events and kind of run them by them to talk about whether they'd be something good to cover and so yeah okay yeah uh, so uh so let's uh, before we get into the protest because you've been you know we've seen you at the protests a lot um let's let's talk about uh, before that what, what are some of the things that stick out in your mind from photography like some of the things that you've covered taking pictures like what means the most to you what, what's the most memorable Oh, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I think, so, I mean, I, I've covered, I've covered a couple different protests and those are always, I've covered several of the Black Lives Matter protests and those are always tough. I mean, just the, everything about it's tough, but, um, and a lot of and a lot of stuff for Leo I've gotten to cover is real interesting. Uh, like I covered an MMA fight uh -huh. one time. One of the fighters actually passed away oh. uh, from the fight. Uh, I think that was kind of the first time that like the photojournalism kind of hit me in a different way because that you know the last minutes of that man's life were on my camera and so. <laughs> So, that was probably the most memorable for me. So with that, so you met the guy beforehand? No, I, no, I did, I didn't get to meet him. Uh, oh, okay. I just we were doing we were doing a story on the MMA and the fights, and um, so I was just kind of taking pictures of everyone fight, you know, all the different fights that were happening, and uh, but yeah, I didn't get to I didn't get to meet the fighters. Okay. Yeah, for a second I thought it was like you had been interviewing him and talking to him and then you had to see that. That would have been really Oh, fun. no, no, no. No, yeah, I was just taking the pictures and we had a writer there um, who was, you know, going to write the story. But 
Yeah. Okay. And uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm here with Catherine Harrington from the Leo and the Voice. We're at Central Park. Uh, we're doing a walk and talk interview uh, mainly because I've always wanted to do a walk and talk interview, and I, I have the equipment now. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the format. Um, so let's move on to the protest. Uh, like I said, I've seen you there a lot. Uh, a lot of other people have. You've kind of been, you know, known to be sighted down there. So uh, let's start from the beginning. But like, what drew you to covering this? And uh, what were your initial thoughts when you heard about what happened to Breonna Taylor? Um, I mean, it's just horrible. It was kind of something, you know, when I heard about it, it's just really surreal. It's like, you know, how can how can something like this actually happen? And it's, and especially, I mean, like any any loss of life is terrible, but just the fact that she was, you know, an essential worker, EMT, just right now. It just kind of, that just made it extra awful. Um, but, yeah, I didn't really know. I just I just couldn't believe that it happened. So what, uh, so how'd that go to uh, you ending up covering the protest? Um, well, I just, I think it was May 28th or 29th, the first night, but I got a, uh, I, I mean, I had kind of been following just, you know, what people were doing, a little, you know, before that I was kind of seeing what was going on. Yeah. Um, you know, just keeping up with the news and everything, but that first night of the protest, I think I got a news update um, that there was a big protest going on downtown. And so I just, uh, I grabbed my cameras and headed down there and I didn't really know what to expect, but I just wanted to see what was happening and to cover it. Yeah, right. let's talk about the process a little bit. Like for me, when I go down there and live stream, and I'm sure the other live streamers and photographers are the same, they all have kind of their philosophy or, or style of what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So when you go down there and, and you're looking for pictures uh, for the magazine, you know, kind of walk us through your process a little bit about, you know, what are you looking for and how are you trying to, you know, I guess how are you trying to frame it and so on. Um, I just kind of, I don't have too much of a plan actually. I just go down there and just shoot as much as I can mm -hmm. and just always kind of listening and looking for different things that are going on. Mm -hmm. um, which was really tough like the first couple of weeks of the protest because there was so much going on mm -hmm. so it's just uh, a little bit of a sensory overload but I can relate to that but yeah <laughs> so I mean my yeah really my plan is just just to capture anything and everything and sort through later find what's find what's good so of what you've seen so far, what has stood out to you the most? Um, I mean, really just, just how, uh, how the momentum has just continued with this, because, uh, I mean, we've seen protests before after, you know, you know, after uh, a person of color is killed by the police, but, you know, and the protests continue for a little bit, but they always see, you know, they fizzle out. But yeah, what's really gotten me about this is just everybody's motivation is just so intense and it's really kept everything moving and um, I mean, I've talked to people down there who have, you know, they've been there every single day. I, uh, I talked to a couple people who said, you know, they, uh, 
Um, you know, a couple people were talking about how they, they lost their jobs because they were so dedicated to being down there. And um, That is seriously dedicated. Well, I mean, and it's, it's life or death. I mean, you know, when I was, those first two weeks that I, those first two weeks that I was able to be down there for, you know, a good amount of time, um, you know, I just kept thinking, my God, I'm so exhausted. Like my legs, my back, my knees, my, you know, just everything hurt. But then I thought about um, just what, you know, about what everybody was fighting for. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, for a lot of people who like just, you know, and it's something that I'd, I've i never had to think about personally, but for a lot of people, like, uh, fighting for this is life or death. Like, you know, as far as protesting, the no-knock warrants mm -hmm. and holding police accountable and, um, yeah, I was rambling, but <laughs> there's, a, there's, a lot to, there's a lot to talk about. All right, so let's add to that. So, since you were there from the beginning to now, well, um, you know, what's kind of the evolution of the protest that you've seen? Uh, what's different about them now than at the at the very beginning? You think, or is there a difference? Um. Well, I mean, they just. I think I guess right now it's really gotten down to. I mean, not that everybody in the beginning was it's not like any I don't feel, not that anybody's less dedicated than somebody else but just the people who are down there now who have been there every day or just really in it for the long haul because you know they started off so big mm -hmm. um, and feels like uh, just this like the group that's down there now it's like it's more organized mm -hmm. and um, so that's good but uh yeah and, and shout out to all those people who are there every day uh you know i try to get down there as much as possible and there are people down there two three times as much as me and uh you know i'm exhausted so props to them for keeping going um got nothing but respect for me Oh yeah, I, I mean, I've, I think about that all the time, you know, whenever I'm down there and I actually, I made a separate Facebook account um, just to, you know, like nobody can, I made it so nobody can find me, like that particular account, but I made it just to, like to follow all the live streamers mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter organization and, uh, you know, standing up for racial justice just to kind of see what they're, you know, what's going on and what's happening. But yeah, all the protesters that are down there that have been there every day and all the live streamers that have been down there nearly every day, uh, just as, I mean, they deserve so much respect. Yeah, absolutely. Really putting in the work. They sure are. And there's too many people to name. We oh, won't yeah. do it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to all of you. Uh, so, uh, um, while you've been down there, what, what, what's the one moment that's kind of stood out the most to you, or, or was there something that got to you emotionally more than anything else? Oh, yeah. Uh, the gunshots on that, fir on that first night. On uh, the first night? Yeah. Um, because I, like I said, I've covered protests before, but they, it's never been, I mean, I've never been a part of anything like this. And those, um, you know, on that first night, I was really getting up in there throughout the night and then the marches getting close to kind of anything that was happening. And then uh, when everybody came back to the, you know, out in front of Metro Hall, I was across the street and um, I heard the shots go off. And that was just kind of like my, oh my God moment. Yeah. Um, because I've, I've never heard, I've never heard gunshots before that, like outside of, outside of TV. Mm -hmm. um, 
so that was kind of my I don't you know I don't want to die tonight yeah uh, kind of the welcome to the revolution moment there exactly yeah, yeah. and um, you know and after that I just I started thinking a lot about just people who you know folks who have to deal with gun violence every day and are afraid of that every day and I've never had to you know I've never really thought about it just uh, personally but and then uh, I think when Tyler Girth was killed that hit different for me just because he uh, I mean we were the same age he went to Trinity I went to Sacred Heart we and uh, I didn't know him personally but just um, I think the fact that he was a photographer just kind of and we were the same age hit you know made it hit a little differently for me yeah I'm sure that's probably real close to home there R.I.P. Tyler yep. another fallen soldier there was uh, yeah one night I was down there it, was, it wasn't too long after he yeah it wasn't it was you know I think it had been it was the same week that he had you know that he had passed but um, I was talking to somebody about him and uh, somebody said some you know I was talking about just uh, how scary that was and just you know thinking about Just, I was really thinking a lot about it, but somebody said to me, you know, yeah, be safe. We don't need to lose another photographer. And I just kind of, I lost it and had to go home that night. But <laughs> So what keeps you coming back now? Um, honestly, like, I mean, I think it's important to cover what's going on. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to go out this past week because my um i have asthma and so like the air quality and the heat has kind of been keeping me inside yeah i've been getting those alerts too for the most part and so that sucks but um yeah. um but it's really the Like the dedication of everybody who everybody else who's down there mm -hmm. and the live streamers that are down there i mean they kind of when i get their notifications of them going live and what they're covering and um it kind of motivates me to get down there and cover what's going on so tough question for you here so covering the the Breonna Taylor protests and covering the Black Lives Matter protests as a white woman kind of what's that like um, what, you know what have you learned about the black community covering this uh, well just that I mean really there I think the biggest thing is that there's so much I need to learn um, just things that I've never, you know, that as a white person, I've never had to think about. Mm -hmm. And that just with all this going on, realizing how much, um, just how much I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, like a, a lot of people down at the protests are, are just so, educated on the law and um you know what police can and can't do and so that's kind of encouraged me to really start looking into different laws and because it's uh i mean i've been embarrassed to think about the fact that i don't i don't really know that much as i should um that's always a process yeah it's a perpetual but, learning yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and i mean i think just like a lot of uh i mean i know like you know a lot of white people are just been thinking about 
my own privilege and things that I just really started thinking about things that I've done or that I can, you know, that I've, I can get away with or I don't even think about, you know, think twice about it, that uh, a black person, you know, is probably, you know, is thinking a lot more about, um, you know, just simple things that nobody should have to think that hard about. All right. We we, we do uh, get that privilege that, you know, we don't even realize it sometimes. Yeah. Just everything ingrained in the system. So where do you think, uh, just, you know, obviously it's just opinion, but where do you see these protests going? Do you think they're going to get the demands they want in the end? Do you think we're just going to be protesting indefinitely? You know, kind of what's your opinion? What do you, what do you think? Um, I mean, I... I think this, I mean, I think this is, all of this is going to lead to some big change. I really hope that it does. I mean, it, it already has. There's just been, you know, there's been a lot more discussion, um, you know, among just everyday citizens about what they can do differently and, uh, you know, how they think and how they, you know, how they, how we talk to each other and, um, you know, and just thinking about, you know, really thinking about other people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but just uh, thinking about, you know, the black community and, um, you know, other people of color that just remembering to think about other people's experiences mm. and uh, how they're different from you know, someone who's white, who might never have had to have, you know, certain experiences like that. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, just, uh, it's good that we're talking about the, you know, that everybody's talking about the culture of the police and how that really needs to change. And I, I mean, I think a lot of change will come from this. I think it'll take more time, but I mean, there are just, there are so many people right now that are, like we talked about, just so dedicated to this. I think everything that, you know, everything that's been happening in the last couple of months has just really kind of sparked what's going on. And so, I think a lot will change. Yeah, I hope so. I'm hopeful. I mean, the pressure just stays on, and these protesters aren't going home. So, oh, yeah. So, you know, Fisher's got to get his act together. If not, he's not going to win the re-election. So, uh, do, oh, uh, do you have anything else you want to uh, mention in regards to the protests specifically? Um, no, nothing in particular. Just, uh, just, uh, a lot of respect and uh, admiration for everybody who goes down there every day and puts in so much of their so much hard work and their energy I mean I know there you know a lot of people are tired and exhausted and just mentally and physically but they go down there every day mm -hmm. and it's just I mean I think that's incredible I agree I agree so before we wrap this up, I uh, want to switch topics for just a moment. Uh, we were kind of talking off camera beforehand about uh, the new independent media guild that's forming here. Now you're with Red Pen. I, I wouldn't really consider Red Pen like establishment media, but I don't know exactly if you all are independent media either. You're kind of in between, but I know as a journalist, you know, you see what's happening to live streamers or, and with the police. Mm -hmm. you know going after them and targeting them uh so i know that's got to hit home to you too so what do you think about you know the formation of an independent media guild here in town and do you think it will have a, a benefit i i think that's really i think it's really important i mean especially for um yeah for independent journalists um i mean it's just it's scary i mean it's it, everything about this is scary but 
Um, well, let me ask you real quick. Have you had any issues with the police while you've been down covering? No, I haven't. I haven't had any issues. Um, but I've just, I've been watching a lot of the, a lot of videos of journalists getting attacked and journalists getting arrested. And then, you know, here recently with the, you know, live streamers getting arrested. And I mean, and I mean, I, I've, I watched their live streams. They, you know, they know their laws and they, they know what they, you know, they can and can't do. And, uh, you know, and they still get, they're getting arrested just for, or, it, you know, it appears they're getting arrested just for recording because they're not doing anything illegal. But yeah, I think it's important for independent journalists to have that kind of protection and, you know, a group. Yeah. It's a shame it has to come to that because it's literally the First Amendment. And uh, yeah. that's what we're there for, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll do what we got to do. I know I can't speak for any other live streamers, but, you know, I'm not out there breaking any laws, save maybe, you know, I do stand in the road sometimes. Mm -hmm. I do stand in the yard sometimes, so I guess there's that, but. Well, I mean, because this whole, you know, this all started because somebody, you know, somebody had a cell phone and got it out and, uh, you know, recorded, recorded the killing of George Floyd. And, um, so, I mean, I, th I think without that, you know, without that coverage of just, of end of, you know, of independent journalists and people being more active with getting what's going on just with their cell phones, I mean, I don't think we'd be where we, you know, I don't think the movement would be where it is right now. Because unfortunately we have, you know, people have to have video evidence before they kind of wake up and think, you know, wow, this is real. This is, this kind of thing is happening. Right. And even with the video evidence from the live streamers, the police don't always tell the truth. Right, But yeah. we still got the documentation at the end of the day, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for your thoughts on that. Uh, it is clouding up and uh, wasn't supposed to rain, but it's not looking good. Yeah, um, I see a raindrop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just kind of let people know, uh, you know, do you have any social media that you want to let people know about as far as finding your work or you personally, uh, either one? Uh, well, I think the best place to find my, my stuff is on Leo's website. I actually don't, I don't think I've posted on Instagram probably in a year. <laughs> so most of my stuff is, is on uh, Leo's, Leo's website, leoweekly.com. Nice, thank you so much. I just felt the first raindrop too. Yep. We're about to shut this down. Uh, just a reminder, this is the first in a series of interviews I'm going to be doing with the media, with the activists that are down there, and just bring you all as many perspectives as I can. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please help support by liking, sharing, following. All that good stuff helps the algorithms, helps spread the message. I am nonprofit independent media. I'm just out here for you all. Um, so look for these interviews. I've got a bunch coming up. If you want to suggest anybody else, uh, you know, let me know in the comments or, or message me. And also let me know in the comments what you think about this format of the walk and talk interview. I've been excited to do one of these and it was fun. So on that note, always, always think critically. See you all next time. Bye.